Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving for z. We have 2z plus z bar is equal to the absolute value of z plus i and we're going to be solving for z. z bar represents the complex conjugate of z and the absolute value represents the absolute value also known as the modulus. So a couple definitions. First of all, if z is a complex number, we can write it in standard form as a plus bi. Obviously, you can also use x plus yi, but a plus bi I like better. It's also the name of the channel. And then, we, based on this, we can evaluate the z bar and absolute value of z. So, if z is equal to a plus bi, then z bar can be written as a minus bi. So, you just change the imaginary part and you get the complex conjugate. And remember, the complex conjugate has a lot of interesting properties. When you multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate, the product is always a real number. When you add them, the sum is always a real number. And that's the unique number that satisfies both of these properties. The absolute value is the distance from zero, and it's given by the square root of a squared plus b squared. But these are related quantities, such as when you multiply z by z bar, you get absolute value of z squared, because it's equal to a squared plus b squared. That's why we say when you multiply two conjugates, you always get a real number, and that is classified as sum of two squares. Not difference, sum of two squares. Great. So this was a quick summary. You could definitely look up the lecture videos. You can go ahead and check it out. Uh, I made, I think, about nine lecture videos from very basic to more advanced stuff. And definitely check those out if you're new to complex numbers. Great. So now, let's go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. So we have 2z, 2 times a plus bi, plus z bar, which is a minus bi, is equal to the absolute value of z, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared plus imaginary unit i. So we do have complex numbers on both sides and they are equal, right? So we're going to find the a, b values that satisfy this equation. Notice that absolute value of z is also a real number, which is non-negative. And then i is an imaginary number, so when you put it together, you can make a nice complex number. And on the left-hand side, the same thing happens. So now let's go ahead and distribute. This gives us 2a plus 2bi plus a minus bi equals the right-hand side. And then we can go ahead and combine like terms or uh, the real parts and the imaginary parts. For example, 2a plus a is equal to 3a. 2bi minus bi is 1bi or just bi. And that is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared plus i. I can be written as 1i, which means now on the left-hand side, we have the real part as 3a, which should equal this quantity. And we have the imaginary part on the left as b, which should equal 1, because 1i is the same thing as i. Okay? Great, so let's go ahead and set this up as a system of equations, and then we're going to go ahead and solve for a and b. So from here we get square root of a squared plus b squared equals 2a, and the second equation actually is fairly simple, and that gives us b is equal to 1. That's nice. I mean, we could square both sides and find b in terms of a and plug it in, but going with the second first, will be a little easier. So let's go ahead and do this. Plug in, substitute 1 for b in the first equation, replace b with 1. That's going to give us the square root of a squared plus 1 equals 2a. And then what we're going to do is square both sides. Let's go ahead and square both sides here. And then we get a squared plus, uh, by the way, this is supposed to be a 3a. So I don't know why I wrote 2a. That's supposed to be 3a. And this is supposed to be 3a. So that's all going to change. Let's go ahead and fix it real quick. And then we'll square it, both sides. Okay. 
Now it should be good. And now if I square both sides, I get a squared plus 1 equals 9a squared. If you subtract a squared from both sides, we get 8a squared equals 1. And then a squared is equal to 1 over 8. Okay, great. So now this gives us two solutions because there are two numbers whose square equals 1 over 8. Those numbers are the square root of 1 over 8 and the opposite of that. But we can write it as 1 over 2 root 2 and negative 1 over 2 root 2. And of course, if you wanted to rationalize the denominator, you can multiply by the conjugates again, but, but this time these are radical conjugates, a little different. And then you would be getting root 2 over 4 and negative root 2 over 4 for the a values. Since there's a single b value that corresponds to two different a values, then this gives us two solutions for our complex number, which was written as z equals a plus bi. So from here, we get z sub 1 as the first solution, which can be written as root 2 over 4 plus bi. And remember, b is equal to 1, so it's just going to be i. And z sub 2 is just going to be the other a value, negative root 2 over 4 plus 1i, or just i. Now, obviously, the next step could be to check our work. And if you go back to the original equation, we have 2z plus z bar is equal to the absolute value of z plus i. Let's just test one of them because the other one is going to be very similar. Let's go ahead and start by finding the absolute value of z. It's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. If you square root 2 over 4, you're going to get 2 over 16, which is 1 over 8, plus 1 squared is just going to be 1, and that's going to give you square root of 9 over 8, which can be written as 3 over 2 root 2. After multiplying by the conjugates, that should be 3 root 2 over 4. So that's what we get from the right-hand side plus the i. Of course, you're going to add i to it, so we're going to get 3 root 2 over 4 plus i on the left-hand side. So this is going to be the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, let's see what we're getting by finding 2z plus z bar. z is this one, remember? So 2z is just going to be 2 times root 2 over 4 plus 2i plus z bar is going to be root 2 over 4 minus i. And if you simplify this, this is going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 4, which is 3 root 2 over 4. And then 2i minus i is just going to be i. And as you can see, the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, and that verifies one of the solutions. The other one is just going to be similar, and you can definitely do that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.